Our next patient is a 66-year-old male. He was diagnosed with an atrial septal defect with significant left to right shunt in April 2013. He presented with symptoms of vertigo. His concomitant diseases are pulmonary emphysema as well as multiple gastric ulcers which were treated by partial gastrectomy. ECG showed sinus rhythm with a heart rate of 66 beats per minute and marked left axis deviation. TTE showed normal LV and RV function with left ventricular hypertrophy. The right heart was dilated, mild tri tricuspid regurgitation with a systolic pulmonary artery pressure of 41 millimeters mercury was also seen. TEE showed a secundum atrial septal defect with left to right shunt and a positive bubble study. Great. Okay. 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 I think we'll start with the right heart catheterization first. The sheath is in place in the right uh, femoral vein. And I'm going to use the multi-purpose catheter for this, which I have to get used to because I'm not used to that from uh, where I'm from. We use the a swan catheter for that. Um, but let me see if I can get it. You said you will do a right heart catheterization. Uh, Actually, for the doctorates, because when they write their thesis about ASD, then the reviewer usually is asking for the uh, uh, shunt determined by oximetry. But I'm uh, not sure whether we have to do it here. Do you want to uh, skip it? Or? Well, if you want to show how to... to no, I, uh, I better not, because I won't succeed then, probably, yeah. <laughs> if I want to show it. Okay, so how to, how to do right heart catheterization with a multipurpose catheter? That's uh, something not everybody knows. So he's using a, a regular um, J wire, emerald wire. You should actually advance the wire more up until you feel some resistance. The tip of the catheter should be at the lower edge of the atrium. And when you feel resistance, then advance. Ev no, no, keep the wire up. Keep the wire up. And keep the wire up until you feel the resistance. Pull back the catheter, but keep the wire up. And now push. No, no, keep the wire up. Yeah. Let me show you. The yeah, wire yeah. should be up there until you feel some resistance, like that, okay? So, yeah, that's what typically makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's yeah. regulated. Yes. And then I keep the wire together with the catheter and now advance everything. I, I keep it together, okay, just okay. advance everything together. Push, 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 push. Faster, faster, faster. Okay, good. So now you have we have a loop in the right ventricle. And now when you pull back the wire, what happens then is that, that this maneuver pulls back the catheter into the right atrium. So you have to do this very carefully. That means uh, pull back the uh, wire very carefully and observe. Okay, you see the movement? Mm -hmm. So that's too much. That means you have to make the tip of the wire soft, which means you have to uh, retrieve the core wire. So it's a movable core in this uh, emerald until the tip is completely soft. Okay, pull more and more and more and more. Okay, more, Most. more, yeah. yeah. There's, uh, okay. There are other ways of um, doing yeah. this, yeah. of course, without of course. the... Of course, yeah, yeah, there are many other ways. Okay. Without the wire, so let's Wait. just talk about them then. What's your favored uh, way um, of entering the right ventricle motor? The, okay, it's let's... Not gonna, it's no, not no, going to confess. Now he's very slowly pulling back the wire, but Dr. not Daniels, into the catheter. Just keep it there at the tip. Normally run against the side of the right atrium, um, okay. make a loop there, and now advance the wire. Any other technique? Okay, yep, advance same. it more. Same. Advance the wire more. The wire. That's not different okay. then, is it? Advance the wire. You can uh, make a loop in the hepatic veins, okay. or sometimes just go straight into the tricuspid valve. Mm -hmm. A multi-person no, sometimes just go in. So. Mm -hmm. Be okay. slightly well. We in may get this. Oh, in this case, yeah. just for diagnostic no purposes, it probably okay. doesn't yeah, matter good. if you go oh, through. Uh, cordal tissue, but if you get in the habit of going straight in to the right ventricle, you might just end up cutting a corner one too many and pulling a, a deflated balloon valvuloplasty catheter, but I accept that wasn't the question I was asking. So the options are creating a loop, either the lateral wall of the right atrium, or using the hepatic veins, or, or <coughs> just maybe with the angle of the, angle of the catheter getting lucky and going straight across, providing you're not going to be using that for an intervention. 
can we record the pressure is uh, 26 over 4. But mean in pressure the US, David, David, you'd use a flow directed catheter, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, actually, with these techniques, with this technique and the techniques you mentioned, Neil, uh, I think we always can avoid uh, 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 coming through the cordae of the tricuspid valve. So that's why this is also helpful for, well, pulmonary valve plasty or pulmonary valve implantation or so on. So instead of using a, a Swan GANS, this is, I think, one of the good techniques. Formula yeah. Uh, when you do your uh, saturation run, Mm -hmm. You do SVC, IVC, PA? Yeah, that's all. We do only SVC, IVC, and PA. Let's check the pressure in the right atrium when you pull back anyway, because uh, to rule out pulmonary stenosis, which is not here the case. Okay. And you use three SVC, one IVC divided by four, yeah? Usually, yes. In this particular case, uh, I will cross the defect. Oh, okay. You crossed the defect already, yeah. So in this particular case, because of the time constraints, we use only one. Uh, oh, look there. What is that? Where we are? Yeah. Where, 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 where we are? Is that pulmonary vein? Yeah. Or is it SVC? How can we tell? Okay, let's discuss it then. Yeah. Just push that catheter a little bit further. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what so does where, it mean? Where could where we, we, be? Are, we could be. does it mean? Yeah, we could be outside the heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you might have perforated the uh, Come on. <laughs> perforated the heart again, mm -hmm. and uh, or it could be where well, could be maybe just pushing the, the uh, huh? yeah. What do you think, Malta? Where do you think that is? I think upper vena cava. Okay, okay. so a uh, superior vena cava is an option outside the heart or in a right pulmonary vein. How are we going to decide where we are? Oh, we, I think we simply have to retrace uh, the catheter uh, at, the, at the heart shape. If it goes through the right ventricle, it must be the pulmonary vein. Otherwise, it might be SVC, but then it's perforated. But then we've lost the catheter position if we pull it back, and it might be useful. So what other method could we do to check? Oxygen. Okay, saturation uh -huh. uh, measurement. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other option? Yes. I think it's right. Uh, upper pulmonary vein, and uh, we can't fill it. We can't really do it due to saturation. Oh. What else okay. could we do other than saturation? Come on, Riz, put me out of my misery. Either pressure or echo or a fluoroscopy at a different angle. Mm -hmm. Or an angiogram. Let's do yeah. an angiogram first because that's the quickest way because the oxygen machine is currently used for routine assisting. Okay. 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 What is it? What is what it? Is it? Looks like superior vena cava. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not it's not pulmonary vein, but the configuration really looks like uh, pulmonary vein. I totally agree. It's a good. Uh, okay. So there we can. Did we check? Uh, uh, good reason there? to discuss it. Mm -hmm. Stefan, just try advancing the catheter there, please. One second. Yes, I will. In just a moment. Just a moment. Oh, you're it's doing the saturation. Yeah. yeah. This is uh, super. Yeah. So advance the catheter, okay. Why, Neil? Go on, advance. Advance. Well, I just want to show general, engage the uh, innominate vein. Too high there. Pull back, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's not the normal, that's subclavin. But Stefan, doing? I just wanted you, you to for? show a bit of basic catheter manipulation. So if you withdraw <laughs> the catheter a few centimeters and then have the tip of the catheter point towards the left shoulder and advance, see if you can uh -huh, engage uh -huh, the nominate uh -huh. vein. Okay. Lower, lower. <laughs> lower. <laughs> lower. <laughs> lower. That's it. You just passed it. Pass it, huh? How do you know that? Years of experience. <laughs> How's Come that? on, Stefan. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's all. You you can get on with it now. All right. All right. Sorry. Oh, comment here from uh, mm -hmm. 
Dr. Okay. Morgan. Mm -hmm. Just a quickie, but if you're doing the diagnostic path to measure the shunt, uh, we don't know what's the pace, what's the FiO2 the patient's on? And the other thing is, if you're in the anomalous vein, it's useful to do a saturation in case there's an anomalous pulmonary vein, so you can check the anomalous vein saturation compared to the SVC. Good points there. So FiO2, I presume, is air. Uh, one yep. second, we can tell you. Uh, has all stuff fine? Uh, yep, it's air. It's air, and the saturation is 95%. Uh, did you take the comment about measuring saturation in the anomalous vein I, I didn't just hear, in case? I didn't hear the last one. Can you repeat that? There's a suggestion that yes. if you get to an omnate vein, it's uh, worthwhile measuring the saturations. Because if there was an anomalous, a single anomalous pulmonary vein, which isn't, well, it's not common, of course, but uh, you will come across it now and again, you might get a high saturation in the omnate vein. Uh -huh. And the other thing we uh, often check is a quick angiogram in the omnate vein, because not particularly in this situation, but if the child was going to go to surgery and you hadn't picked up it's possible you could miss a left superior vena cava. Uh, that's a relatively common uh, accompaniment of many, uh, of many congenital heart abnormalities. And of course, it would have implications for bypass I surgery. See. So it's a good point made uh, there. OK. OK. Come on, Stefan, get a move on. It's your second case already. You must yeah, be expert now. I'm waiting now. for your discussions, though. So now he will try to cross the uh, defect. Okay, uh -huh. looks good. We're cooking That's with gas now, uh, Stefan. Can you ad advance a little bit more? Sure. Yeah. Good a moment, more? anyways. Yeah. Even more. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good position now. Okay, now we can use, can we have the amplitude extra stiff, please? Mm -hmm. And then we need the uh, sizing balloon. Stefan, you're still working in uh, Minneapolis predominantly, yes? That's, that's correct, yes. Which institution? It's the VA hospital, Veterans Affairs Hospital. We, we, don't, we don't see PFOs that much or ASDs. Uh, at least not at the VA hospital. In fact, he is predominantly working here, and then if he needs some rest, then he goes then back I go to, to Minneapolis. That's Minneapolis. correct, yes, more or less, yeah. What's the name of your boss in Minneapolis? Ed McFalls. Advance, advance, advance. <laughs> Who to write to, okay. <laughs> this is Hossa. You're allowed to take your foot off the pedal now and again, Stefan. Okay, okay. Each time, each second you have your foot on the pedal, Every part of you your, body, I'll, I'll part of your body and part of somebody else's body is being irradiated and killed. <laughs> and a little cancer cell is starting somewhere. Think of it that way. Yes, I think you're right. I think you're right. But it's, a, it's worth talking about because uh, it's very easy when you're, um, you know, just learning. T t we, and I've been there, don't worry, to uh, have a little, mu you know, put your foot on the pedal and forget that it's there. Hello. German. Yeah, but now we have to uh, calibrate. Mm -hmm. Can we learn uh, mean, mean pulmonary artery pressure and pulmonary vascular resistance? Well, um, in him, the mean pressure was normal. I didn't. I don't recall the exact number of it, but the systolic was less than 30, I think, as far as I recall. Um, Which means we do not calculate pulmonary vascular resistance when we have these values, plural. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Okay. If you ask for this, is this okay? Maybe just quicker. Uh, I guess it's yeah, kind of mm, okay. Yeah, I'm kind of cold, but mm. all right. So now he's de-airing the uh, balloon, connecting again the manifold to the lumen of the balloon. We have 50 range on the pressure recording. That's enough. Yes, yeah. Okay. Good. 
Now you, you don't see any pressure, which means uh, we have to inject yeah, one cc of saline into the balloon, because only then we will be able to see the pressure. Okay. Who's uh, doing the echo? Uh, echo is not there yet, but uh, who is doing the echo? Uh, I, I am uh, Bushra. Bushra huh? and um, I am. Bushra yeah. and, and Ilona? Ilona, okay. yeah. Ilona? Both of you. And Bushra, okay. yeah. Bah. Bushra. <laughs> Bushra, when, yeah. are you going Bushra. when are you going to pass the uh, uh, probe? Uh, we're just about to do it now, I think. Okay, let's do the balloon sizing now. So, uh, let me go forward a little bit. Huh? Stop, Pluto. Yeah. Remember what <laughs> Neil yeah, just told remember. you? Huh? Advance the balloon a little bit more. This is an ASD, so it's a bit tricky. Yeah. And actually, it's uh, uh, very important to start with the balloon inflation in the left atrium and not at the level of the septum. Further? Yeah, further. What's the... Uh, Do you feel resistance? That? Okay, so he feels resistance. So the wire is in place, and he cannot advance the balloon anymore. And that sometimes there's friction between this wire and the balloon. So you should move the wire about five millimeters up and down. No, no, just move the wire. Mm -hmm. Just move. Just move What's the wire in and out. Just okay. can anybody, can anybody <laughs> tell me what this is? Okay. Can you advance the balloon now? What's this? I don't yes. know myself. Yeah. Okay. Horst, what's this radio opaque? Yeah, I think it looks like, look, looks like looks like a device, but it's not a device. Probably it's an electrode from the EKG or something like that. It's a funny shape. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. I don't know what it is. Can we remove? Julia is checking. Maybe a dislodged device from spine surgery. Embolized. Embolized device from spine surgery. Okay, Bruno? Okay. Okay. okay, so now we can actually start inflating the balloon. So now it's important to keep tension. That means uh, to advance the wire until you feel a little bit resistance and also keep the balloon in position. You may advance the balloon a little bit more to have it at the really in the left atrium, advance it more. Uh -huh. So now I have too much contrast here, so I will exchange for saline. Keep the balloon up. Mm -hmm. Floral. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm inflating the balloon. Be ready to thinner as uh, before the balloon moves. You should thinner before the balloon moves. Take it back. Okay, now you can. Ad advance the wire and slowly pull back the balloon until you see the waist. Pressure is okay, yeah. Pressure is still okay, yeah. Seems to be a small defect. Okay, now you can, uh, we can actually can advance Deflated. the wire and pull back the balloon very gently, but observe the pressure in between. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You see a little waste arising there, can pull a little bit more. Let me deflate the balloon a little bit because we are it's probably too full. Okay, thinner. Okay, that looks good, but we will continue. The pressure is rising, so don't pull more. No, I'm no. deflating the balloon a little bit more. Uh -huh. Too pressure much pressure is good now. Yeah, but we can use ISO calibration. Come back. A okay, more. pull back. Uh -huh. ISO calibration is uh, faster pressure than is using the markers. Okay, thinner again. Uh -huh. I'm deflating more. You can thin and uh -huh. pull. Pressure is still pretty high. Though. Yeah, no, pr pressure is good. We still yeah. 30 yeah. is maximum pressure. I'm deflating more. Okay, thinner. Uh -huh, okay, thinner. that's a good okay. waste now, okay? Good. good. So now, uh, stop fluoro. Mm -hmm. I will do some measurements. And Bushra has inserted the TE probe. So what did we use for sedation here? Three metazolam. Three milligram is that. It's three milligram of metazolam. That's what he needed. Okay. Think of the money you'd save if it was intracardiac echo. Oh you wouldn't have God. to pay anything for it's metazolam. Yeah, that's correct. All you have to do is pay for the ice probe. Which is no problem. Huh? That's a lovely picture, Bushra. And what numbers are you getting on echo? Well, the balloon's actually um, moved back into the right atrium, but the first image we've got there, and we've got the waist measuring um, 15 millimetres.
So you see on the fluoro picture that we measured 13, it looks, when I look at echo, I think the balloon is not in position anymore, correct? Yeah. yeah so but 13, that's not, that's yeah. not the image yeah. that Busher was measuring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this, so this the is balloon the is slipped into the right atrium now. Yeah, so that's, that's the one I measured from, the image mm -hmm. you can see now. And that's where I got the waste. And color, please. Oh, you've taken it out, sorry. Yeah. Deflated. Yeah, it's a little more important to. So Stefan is now deflating the balloon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's Let's gone a bit go quickly, but I just go wanted to make go the go demonstration go. of flow occlusion and then looking for other other defects. Comment coming, Horst. Huh? So, Horst, I mean, this, this patient might have had a TOE or echo beforehand, but unfortunately, because the probe went down quite late, we didn't really get to learn anything about the morphology of the septum or um, additional defects or whatnot. So I presume you had that information to start with? We had an uh, TE before, yes. So what is your question then? TE before, yes. But what is the other question? Uh, about the morphology of it, uh, whether we can characterize it any further. Uh, no, there was not. I mean, secundum defect, obviously. Uh, I don't see any details here on the case description. It was described as a single defect, a yeah. small defect. Uh, there was a large shunt, um, but uh, and no interatrial septal aneurysm, as far as we know. We looked at one image uh, together earlier, mm -hmm. which demonstrated the shunt uh, and just a small ASD with no further defects, as far as we could tell. So we have a 15 millimeter defect. And the uh, device? Well, pre-selection for the, uh, the uh, Oclutec. Oclutec and Ampeter are actually nothing, nothing pretty nothing. similar. You could probably also get away with the GSO as well, 15. We don't have it in the lab today, but uh, otherwise, yes. Pay attention that the wire stays yeah. up there. Pay attention, the wire yeah. comes down. It looks fine. It's veins. So sometimes there is friction inside of yeah, these uh, sizing balloons between yeah. the. Mm. Do you want to mark it out? Okay. I'll hold our sheet. Uh, mm. I'm just advancing mm. and pulling. Wow. Okay. A lot of friction now. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed that too sometimes with the yeah. sizing balloons. It's it's disconcerting. Yeah. You don't. Expect or anticipate it. Is it completely empty, the balloon? Uh, David, yeah, I mean, it looked right like it Harry's got a yeah. comment. David, in Good. Los okay. Angeles, I've never, s I've never seen the uh, pressure in the balloon <laughs> being measured. Is that in lieu of a stop flow diameter because they're not uh, using the T at yeah. the same time? What, what's the utility of and how they use that information? The pressure. Well, uh, the, the pressure measurement is performed in order to avoid overstretching of the defect. Yeah. So I inflate the balloon until, until I see a waste without increase of pressure. That makes just sure that I don't tear the septum. And okay, so uh, let's go through the echo images. Can we Kay. see? No, the balloon is out, so you can see the defect by itself. Of course, the, yeah. the, the David has a comment that um, Mm. He maybe thinks just inflating the balloon gently and looking at the atrial septum under echo is uh, equally reassuring or, or sufficient. Yeah, it's more, it's logistically more difficult because we, tr we try to keep the TE time as short as possible. And when we do the balloon sizing without TE, this just shortens the TE time. And also, I think it's more, uh, it's less operator dependent. Because you see the pressure, you see the waste, so you don't have to look around for for residual shunt around the balloon, which is requires more time and more experience. It's more operator dependent. Usha, can you make the image just one stop bigger, please? I can. Thank you. Lovely. Perfect. So, so yeah. And the and the dimension just on its own, uh, Busher, please, yeah. if you could. Mm -hmm. 
I'm just, I'm just doing all the views and I'm looking for the largest diameter. I do this on colour and I'm getting, so far the largest is nine millimetres, but I'm still looking. And you, you're going to do a 3D acquisition? Yes? Yeah. I can do that now if you like. I just yes, please. Yeah. Okay. I just grab that one image, get that measurement. With a yeah, so t ten millimeters without the balloon, and then we'll just do a 3D. Schleuser. Okay. So. Uh as I said, we are we have pre-selected this patient for the uh, for the awkward tech. The question is, which device size are we are going to use? Yeah, we're just discussing here. Okay. Okay. Just uh, be quiet for a second, Horst. Okay. So, so I, Neil, I've got a comment on the anatomy as well. When you're ready. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Bushra. So yeah. I, can you see the 3D image? We can. So that's the left atrial view, and um, you can see so the mitral valve is here. This is the right upper pulmonary vein coming along here. So in front of us, that region here where you can see some dropout is a fossa ovalis. You can see the wire through the what actually is a glorified PFO, in fact. So if you look at the attachments of this, there's the attachment here and there, and the opening is 10 millimeters with the wire across, the largest we've seen so far, but the balloon diameter was um, 15 millimeters. And this is really, it's acting like a, a secundum type ASD, but actually this is a glorified PFO with an aneurysmal septum. I don't know what just, Professor just Seifert thinks of that. We've got a comment from Karsten. Uh, is the ZD echo useful in uh, getting the right size? Because it can be that on fluoroscopy, we may pick, uh, if it's not a really an oval ASD, we may pick uh, too large or too small a diameter, maybe. Yeah, so m my, our method is to um, do uh, color uh, and t on 2D. That's my preferred method of me measurement. And then I do that protocol, 0, um, 50, 90, 120. And from that, with color compare, we'll then find the largest diameters. And then I compare that to the 3D anatomy with the images that I just showed you. I don't actually like to do it on 3D. I know that there are some that do. And I think it just very much depends on what you're used to doing and how that equates to yours. Because we don't balloon size. So that's my method and you know, tried and tested. So I trust that. And you've never had an embolization? Um, we have, we've had one embolization. And that was when we balloon sized. <laughs> Good answer. Bushra, could we just see that 3D picture you have at yeah. uh, number 20 something? Yeah. Please. This one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Just make that point again about glorified. So there's PFL. a wire. Yeah. Yep. Maybe if I could freeze this image. See if I can uh, run through can it with you, just to show you the, the, yeah, this is better. So can you Wait, see the attachments here? This is a septum primum attachment here. Here it goes round the wire, and it's attaching at the back there. And this is actually a PFO type anatomy, but it's just in very, o very open. It's a large um, open PFO with an aneurysmal fossa. And you know, this, so it's a debate as to at what point that becomes a secundum ASD, but it's acting like a secundum ASD with a dilated right heart and pressures that are slightly raised. So we, we would treat it as such. So I'm less worried about where the pulmonary veins are. OK, and uh, did you decide on device size? Horst, we've had some suggestions here. I couldn't hear actually these suggestions, but... Uh, no, I didn't tell you the suggestions. I've okay. been asking people while you were talking about oh, something okay. else. Okay, okay, okay. We have, uh, at one end of the spectrum, we have a 12 millimeter device, and mm -hmm. at the other end, 18, and uh, all sizes in, well, all low, all, um, uh, all even sizes in between. Okay, so well, I, th I think this is, uh, uh, we measured 13 point something with, uh, with uh, fluoro, uh, Busha, again, what was the maximum measurement you did with uh, echo? Uh, with the balloon, 15 millimeters. 15? Yeah. Uh, so I think, well, actually, 15 should be fine, actually. 15 should be OK. Let's try the 15, and if that doesn't work, we can still switch. But I, it, I think 15 should be fine. 
OK, so the sheath is up there. Uh, the tip of the dilator is in the pulmonary vein. And now Stefan is advancing the sheath a little bit. OK. So now, uh, as discussed, we can now leave the wire in place. Or I, pr I usually pull both back. But I mean, both techniques are OK, I think. Now Stefan is de-airing the sheath. OK, so there is some backflow. Close up of the hub. Can you show the hub? Remember physics? So this yeah, yeah. has to be like that. Yeah, okay. okay. And then snick again and turn it down. Snick again. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now open the device. <coughs> Can you make this spine uh, gerade schieben? Okay. So Horst, you decided 15, yeah? yeah? Yeah. I think this was the mean of or a median of all suggestions, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Stefan, Stefan, Stefan yes. chose that number, did you, Stefan? Was <laughs> that your decision? No, no, that's a mutual decision. Mutual decision. Mutual. Okay. Okay. So again, we have to. We are using the just the nine French sheet, which is on the table anyway. Patient starts moving a little bit. Sorry, question here from uh, Karsten. Yeah. Uh, just a general question. Uh, we, we use much bigger, uh, bigger uh, devices in, in PFOs. So why are you so, uh, so mean to go next to what you measure in uh, ASD and go as close as possible to have embolization? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for ASDs, the uh, uh, device size is not the diameter of the device. Mm -hmm. yeah, the device size is the waist of the device. With PFO devices, the device size is the total diameter of the umbrella. So uh, that means a, a 20 millimeter ASD device has about 25 or 27 millimeter total diameter, whereas a 20 millimeter PFO device has a diameter of only 20. So now you can connect. It makes considerable make more flat. sense now, mm -hmm. because uh, mm -hmm. otherwise we would have been a little bit lost yeah. in 15 yeah. millimeters. Yeah, absolutely. Can you see it? Keep, keep it flat. Keep it like this. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That makes it easier to grab the. E oh. Even so, you could. Right. Like this. You could make a case for a mm -hmm. slightly bigger yeah. device. No, no, come from the side. Okay. Ah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. okay, now it's connected. Okay. So the best way is to have the device flat and then come from the side with the, uh, with the uh, delivery system. No, I'm uh, screwing it on again. Focus on my hand. I'm screwing it. Jürgen, focus on my hand. Screwing it? Oh, screwing the handle, yeah. Yeah, here, okay. okay. Now, Horst. Mm -hmm. I noticed the uh, last delivery cable you used was pale blue, and this one is yellow. Oh, sorry, pale oh. blue and red, and this one is yellow and uh, red. Is ah, that of any significance? That's, or? that's a good point. I never really noticed that. You can pull it uh -huh. in. Yeah. So maybe it's kind of color coding. I'm not sure. Just pull it in. Does anybody? Uh, just a minute. Some, I think somebody has a suggestion why that might be the case. Pull it in. I think the okay. bigger devices have a different, uh, yeah. the cable's different, so the color coding in the larger devices mm -hmm. um, is, is that way. The smaller devices have a different attachment cable, so that's why it's colored differently. Mm -hmm. The yellow one's the bigger one, the blue one's the small one, I think. We think the yellow might mean the bigger uh, cable, or the cable that goes with the bigger devices, mm -hmm. and the blue the smaller, so, but we only think, we're not sure. So that's how helpful the color coding's been for Dr. Morgan. <laughs> So now he is advancing the umbrella through the... Remember, the tip is difficult to see. Okay, so now the tip is uh, at the level of the hey. defect. Julia is doing uh, a good job looking yeah, yeah, after yeah, the patient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he is fighting. 
probably his grandfather is from the U.S. or somewhere. Okay. Should I come back with the sheet a little Just bit? Pull, Just pull the sheets back a little uh -huh. bit because uh -huh. we are still in the Pamani vein. Yes. Maybe a little bit more. <laughs> okay. Okay, advance a little bit more. Okay, now we are, uh, when I look on Fluoro, we are just at the orifice of the Pamone vein. And now you can basically keep the metal in place and don't advance the whole thing. Pull back the whole thing a little bit. Okay, and now keep the metal in place and pull back the plastic, the sheet. And this will expose the left atrial disc. Okay, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Pull back the, the sheet. Pull mm -hmm. back the sheet. Okay, so you see the left atrial disc is open. It's far away from the septum. We see this on uh, echo. It's almost at the orifice of the appendage. So you can pull back the whole thing together, everything together, and rotate clockwise because this will align the uh, uh, device to the defect. Rotate a little bit more clockwise, the whole thing, everything together. Okay, so pull a little bit more. Okay, looks good. We are, when you look on echo, you can see that we are about two centimeters away. Now you are close to the pulmonary vein, which is fine. Busha, can you show us the long axis view at this point, please? Yeah, Keep it there. I'll just uh -huh. Get up long there. axis view of the septum, yeah. and you can pull back the whole thing a little bit more. Uh -huh. I know it's uh, resistance. Yeah, I can see that. Can pull back a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Stop. You are close uh -huh. to the defect. Actually, now you should expose the waste of the device, which means uh, keep the metal in place and pull back the sheet. Expose the central waste. So keep the metal in place, pull back the sheet uh -huh. a little bit more, yeah. a little bit more, a yeah. little bit more, okay. just a little bit more. Okay, good. Now it's tilting, that's fine, and you can pull the whole system, everything together, uh -huh. so that the device is now aligned uh -huh, to I the septum. Yeah. You uh -huh. see this on yes. echo, yeah. okay? And now you can basically ex deploy the right edge your disc, mm -hmm. which means uh, yeah, and advance the metal. Uh -huh. This opens the right edge your disc. Very nice. We see that uh, the septum secundum is in between the two umbrellas, and we also see that the inferior part of the septum is in between the umbrellas. And on the short axis view on the right side of the picture, which is turned around, so on the left side is the aorta. Have some color, please. Yeah, uh, some color, some please. Yep, yep. Are you uh, happy with what you see? Yeah, it looks good to me. I think that's nicely sandwiched between the two discs. Uh, as far as I can tell, I'm, I'm happy with what I see. I just want to see, I, I'm probably imagining it, but I just wondered if there was a very small inferior uh, okay. second okay. defect. Second defect, Busha, do you see that? Oh, I haven't seen any. I'm, I'm looking. Mm. No, I think I saw something else. I can't see anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you look at Fluoro, what is very nice with this device is that it's flexible connected to the delivery cable. So you can see that uh, it's not tilting the device too much. Yeah. Can you show Fluoro again? Yeah, okay. Yeah, there. Okay. Okay, so I think, um, can we release now? I think it looks very good. Just a second, Carsten, before you release. So, so the point that you want to make is, is since there's this flexible link, uh, the septum will uh, regain its natural position uh, and, and you will see better if, uh, if it fits nicely uh, as opposed to others who, which, uh, other devices which do not have this link and then only after you release them you know if it's nice or not, right? Exactly. So if there's a stiff connection between the delivery cable and the device, that means the septum is tilted as pulled down by the device, and when you release it, you see a big jump of the device. And this jump is already present with the Oclotec, but it's not so much pronounced because the flexible connection. Uh, can we release? I think we'd agree for uh, 
released. What do you think, Stefan? You have to make the decision. No, I, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. You're I'm absolutely sure. sure. Absolutely it's your You're making that decision yeah. now. Well, it's it's your yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to embolization, so I'm absolutely sure. Okay, <laughs> good. All right. Okay, so unscrew the um, the the red thing. Under floor? Or? No, it doesn't matter. Right? No, nothing happens when you mm -hmm. do this. And now remember the next step is to actually pull on the black one, which will release mm -hmm. the device, fluoro, to make sure that nothing happens. Okay. Maybe send to the... Uh, mm -hmm. oh. Okay, very mm -hmm. good. Hi. Very nicely done. Great, thank you, thank you. Yeah, Bushra, that's a lovely picture there. Yeah, the, the device Final on check with echo. On That's release. the left side, yeah. Yeah, left atrial side. So on release, you can see the disc has assumed a nice position on the septum. Mitral valve is here. Uh, right upper for me vein is here. So there's the device sitting oh. beautifully. And if I just turn it around to look at the right atrial side. <coughs> so here you can see, I'll just slightly rotate that to make it anatomical. So there's the SVC. IVC is here, coronary sinus is this thing oh. here, and there's the device Lower. sitting nicely yeah. on the septum. And then we'll just go to 2D and just do Eine our colour and minute. look around the septum. So if I keep going in that direction to the long axis view, you can see we've gripped the septum nicely. There's a tiny bit of flow just through the device itself, which is um, normal and it defined. You can see the right upper formula vein, you can see the device isn't obstructing anything, but we, we already know that because we've, got, we've had a nice overview with the um, 3D. And if we just go back to the aorta, now we can have a look there. And it looks lovely, very nice. I'm not suggesting we do it. Thank you, Busher. I'm not suggesting we do it, Horst, but remember in the, uh, in the old days when we first started doing these, we used to do pulmonary artery angiogram in the, uh, with, a, with an LAO projection to look at recirculation and how things looked. But you don't do that anymore. No, obviously. we don't do this anymore. No, no. no okay. No. No. okay. Uh. Okay, let's ask the audience. Neil, can you hear me? Yes, I can, but uh, Carsten was going to make a comment. Okay, or good. Or mm -hmm. yeah. for a fusion as well how, how important is the can sizing, balloon again? sizing, if you have the echo already? Yeah, Do you really need it, or could okay. you say every, everything between 12 and 18 should be okay? That's Busher's question. Busher, did you hear that? No, I didn't. The question was, why bother balloon sizing when you have such beautiful echo pictures? Well, as I said, in our institution, we don't. We, use, we do our, all our measurements on echo. Bushra, you must, you, I'm sure <laughs> in your institution, you've done several hundred ASD closures by now, I'm sure. And you've had only one embolization, and that was after balloon sizing. Hello. There you go. Yeah, she's, she does not have enough experience with balloon sizing because she's not doing it routinely. And I know <laughs> and we know we don't have enough experience with uh, uh, echo sizing, so that's why we prefer balloon sizing to determine the diameter. So I think both ways exist. There's no 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 question about that.